it's the weekend, so it's time for highs and lows. I'll go first this week. Uh, so my high is that we found out that a goat that we're getting is pregnant. So there were some conditions for this goat. Uh, we are getting it for free, which is super exciting. But it's a blessing. The yes, but the conditions were only if she could get pregnant or got pregnant. Yeah. And um, they, there was a little bit of trouble, you know, first two times she went into heat of her not getting pregnant, and then this third time I told them, you know, like, hey, if she doesn't get pregnant this time, we don't want her. Yeah. Uh, well, she got pregnant this time. So really excited. We have Nigerian dwarfs and this one's a mini Nubian. So mini Nubians are a little bit bigger than the Nigerian dwarfs and they will give us more milk because of that. Yeah. So we're really excited about that. And just to see like what the difference in the taste of the milk is. Yeah. Some people say there's not really much of any, but we'll find out. So my low this week, probably just kind of feeling burnout mm. um, in just everything. I'm just kind of at one of those points where you're like, man, I need a vac vacation. Mm -hmm. uh, just mentally and emotionally and all of that. We've just had a lot of stuff kind of hit. Yeah. That's just like, feels like one thing after another, after another. Um, the first thing I talked about last week was my truck. The transmission is actually what happened and it went out. So getting that worked on and fixed. Um, and then this week we had the radio go out and cast his car, which not a big deal. First world right. problem, right. but it was just kind of like that compounded on top just was like, Oh my gosh, seriously. And then this morning I went on a date with my, our oldest daughter, Sayla and Cass called me and we have a leak in the house. Uh, so just those type things just continually kind of piling up and I'm just kind of done with it. Mm -hmm. I don't think the leak is as bad as we were afraid it was, but yeah. it's still just kind of one of those things. So I'm just sort of mental, emotional, <laughs> um, kind of fatigue going on with me. So what about you? So my high was just a continual growing of excitement for like experimenting with things on our property and like growing new things. and. Um, still kind of like we're in that dreaming phase, so that's still like really, really fun and exciting and feel like we still have a lot of flexibility with what we can do in the future. So um, I'm, I don't know, I've just been really excited about, about what we're going to do next and um, what we're going to do in the front yard and all that. So that's been fun. Um, my low was probably also like the car, my car radio going out. I think like for me, I, f I found that I really use the backup camera more than I thought I did. <laughs> so um, it's been, we have a very long driveway. So that's been like just a little frustration. Again, a first world issue, we can definitely survive without it, but um, you know, whatever. And, and also I haven't been sleeping well. So like, like Jeremy said, just like really tired and I don't know, just feeling like that. <laughs> yeah. I like the way she put it better. <laughs> yeah. That sums it up. Yeah. It's just not feeling great. Uh, one thing that is exciting that I just kind of noticed in my peripheral vision is our green stalk behind us. Yes. Uh, we did a video when we put this thing together a couple weeks ago. I'll link that one at the end of this video. If you want to check that out but this was a super early birthday present for me, but it's getting to like where it's really producing now. We've been having, um, getting salad off of yeah. it uh, a good bit now, and it's really starting to kind of come into its prime. So we'll be able to harvest more and more lettuce. And also the broccoli that we have planted on the bottom two tiers is really coming along nicely. Yeah. So as well as the broccoli in our main garden in the front yard, which we have never had much luck with broccoli, but these plants are looking really good. So I really think that this might be kind of a good year for us with yeah. that. Yeah, and our, our cabbage looks good. Yeah, I'm it's excited. heading up. We've always had trouble with cabbage like heading up early yeah. enough to like get a good head on it. Yeah, it but, um, will, like, we'll have great leaves, but then it just never really would head up really right. well. So, so we've got one or two that have really started heading up nicely. And then the rest look like they're starting to get those heads on there. Yeah. So. Um, really excited about hopefully having good luck with brassicas because that yes. is definitely like we're still there very much in the learning curve if any of you guys have any 
like suggestions or recommendations for that type of stuff, please, please, please let yeah. us know in the comments below. Um, we really look forward to seeing those comments and look forward to any advice you guys ever have um, with all of this. We never try to come off that we're experts. We are learning this and we're just kind of sharing with you guys what we do and what we have found successful and even some of the things that we're still trying to figure out. Yeah. So. Um, your input is always welcome. Yes. So today we are going to be talking about something that has been a huge success for us. Yes. Uh, took me a little while to actually like get out and do it, but we've had it for almost a year now, I think, mm -hmm. and it's been working great. And that is our chicken water and chicken feeder. So the yes. water and the food container for the chickens. Um, a lot of times we get asked like, how do we how are we able to do all of this? And a large part of that is we try to simplify stuff as much as possible. Yeah. And with the water and the feeder setup that we have, it requires like our attention once a week. Yeah. That's it. Um, so it makes it really easy. We mm -hmm. just do it with the week, during the weekend um, when we're not as busy. So we're gonna go over there and take a look at that. look at the chicken feeder that I did. So this right here, this is really just kind of for us, it keeps the door latched so that it makes it harder for any predator to maybe try to get in. Um, it also is a safety thing for us because we have come in here, had the door shut, latch, and you can't get it unlatched if you're on the inside. So this is attached to that latch so you can just pull it, unlatch it, and we can get back out. Um, what this also does that I like is because this thing is hanging on a somewhat long chain and it swings a lot and uh, can turn around. This basically just um, stabilizes it and keeps it to where chickens aren't trying to chase it around or anything like that. So what this is, is it is just a five gallon bucket and I'm going to take this off and we're going to fill it up with food. It does have some food in there, but we're gonna go ahead and top it off. Um, it is not a lot. So if you can see down in here, we got a PVC and that is just a Y connector is all it is. And we cut the, the bottom section at an angle about a 45. There's no real particular like angle that you have to cut on it, but about a 45 that leaves this open for food to be able to get in. You're just basically eliminating that 90, which would sit on the very bottom. And then it Y's going down um, at this angle, which will come out right there, which we'll talk about that in a second. The other thing is you wanna cover this top. You put a cap on it or something like that. It just keeps all the food from falling down in there because if it fills this up, it's just gonna continually flow and spill out. Um, what we use is what we used to have for our water, for our chicks, uh, it's the base of it. Flip it over, cover it up, that easy. Um, Really what you want is the food to be able to enter in at the bottom and they stick their head in the Y section that comes out of the bucket uh, to get the food. We're going to fill this thing up. Almost. That's all of it in that bag, so that'll do. This will get us through the week, um, that, that much food, so. Put that back on and we're gonna hang it. All the videos I saw basically had you just cutting a hole in uh, the five gallon bucket. You slide the PVC through it and then seal it some way like with caulk or you could just use like the PVC cement or whatever. Well, I didn't have a hole saw that big so I got a little innovative and actually liked the way I did it because it helps to seal it also. So we have a butane torch I just took that torch and blasted this thing until I melted it um, enough to create a hole and where the rest of the plastic around it was really soft. Put that PVC Y connector in there, pushed it through and basically kind of molded all of this around it. And it sealed up pretty good. There's a couple of holes and stuff, but that actually just, the chickens had fun kind of pecking at that hole and trying to get the food out of it um, when they aren't sticking their head in there. So. I just look at, at it as it's our enrichment program. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the, the reason this is so waterproof is because um, you're using that Y and that the Y is angled down. And so that opening is angled down towards the ground. So any water or rain that gets on this is just gonna literally run right off of it and not get into the food. 
it also makes it really hard for anything rodent wise to be able to get into the food to where they could start causing problems you don't want rat or mice getting into your chicken food and pooping in there because that's what's going to cause salmonella which then transfers to the eggs which then transfers to you so that's a big time protection thing when you're looking at chicken feeders you definitely want to avoid that at all costs and so far this has really done a good job of doing that it is kind of fun watching them stick their heads up in that hole it took them a little while to kind of trust it and get used to it but once they figured out what it was it was fine so that's a super easy diy chicken feeder using a five gallon bucket that is rodent proof waterproof and quite frankly better than anything that's on the market that you can buy all right, so for our water, these are all things that you buy from the store. And one of our chickens is demonstrating on how they use it. Uh, but it is DIY, but everything is intended to be used for this, unlike the feeder where you're using other products. All it is is a five gallon bucket and what is called chicken water cups, which are these things right here. So essentially what these things are, they screw into the bucket. So you do have to drill a hole, um, but outside of that, it is really, really easy. And even that is easy. But the hardest thing about this is making sure you get the right size hole. Instructions should tell you what size hole to drill. Thread this into it, you screw it in, attach the water and this little thing that looks like corn that makes it really interesting to the chickens. They do this and it fills up with water. Ingenious, right? It's all of the water really, really clean, uh, which is really good. If you own chickens, you know how dirty water can get just from the chickens drinking out of it. Uh, I don't know how, but they managed to like make it super, super dirty. I guess there's that much dirt on their beaks. I don't know. Uh, but if you're thinking about getting chickens, definitely go this route. We tried a couple other watering systems and none of them were as hands off and easy as we wanted it to be. Uh, it was constantly having to change water almost every day, definitely every other day just to keep it clean. This eliminates all of that. One way that we make sure that it does stay clean for the chickens as far as just sitting in there for a week is um, we will, one, make sure the bucket's clean inside when you refill it, but two, add a little bit of apple cider vinegar. Uh, for this five gallon bucket, I don't ever measure it. I probably put, I mean, I could put a couple of splashes in that I would say, I don't know, anywhere from like one to three tablespoons. That's kind of a guesstimation. Um, and that just gets that vinegar ratio up of just enough to help avoid anything from being able to grow in there. Um, one thing that I would do differently, and I will probably end up painting this one black, is avoid using a white bucket, only because more light tends to get in that white bucket on the inside. And so we do occasionally get a little bit of mold in between the changings that we do have to wipe out, clean out um, inside the bucket. But for the most part, it's staying really clean. Again, uh, apple cider vinegar really helps keep all that down as well. Really easy, really hands off uh, water for the chickens. Another thing I do need to mention is we do have another one on the other side. For our number of chickens, we needed at least two. Uh, maybe adding a third one uh, next year, just with the number of chicks and stuff that we have and as the flock grows. But uh, yeah, really easy, chickens like it, and it keeps everybody clean, and the area around it clean, keeps anything from getting into it that could contaminate that water and make it unsafe for the chickens. I did want to mention about this feeder is initially I was really concerned uh, that our chicks wouldn't be able to get access to food. We had tried putting in little feeders with like chick food and the older chickens would just bully them and take it all. So I wasn't sure how our chicks were gonna get food with this really tall feeder. Um, but chickens are actually smarter than you'd think and the hens have done a great job of like sticking their little beaks in and pulling pulling food out and then calling their little chicks over so they actually pull the food out of the feeder for the chicks to eat and hello <laughs> she just wanted to be held yeah so they pull their little chicks over um 
or they pull the food out for the chicks so that they have plenty of food and they can forage here. We're in the woods. Um, they do a lot. They do a lot of foraging, but, um, right now I'm watching a mom. She's over there pulling all the little pellets out for her little chick to eat. So they do a great job with it as well. Camera shy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's all we have for today. If you have any questions about any of these things, please feel free to comment, ask us whatever you want. Um, also, if you are liking our content, please, Remember to like, subscribe, share it on your social media. If you have friends that are wanting to homestead or are interested in gardening or farming, we'd love to be connected with them as well. We hope you have a great week and be blessed.